What's going on, y'all? Leo Farmer 73 here. Good to see y'all here. Uh, let me put that on here, too. All right. What's going on? Uh, Guava, who was that? Hey, growing what I eat. Guava to you, my brother. Hey, traveling through. Hey, Angie Seaway. Um, I'm just getting back. I'm just getting back. It's hard for me to even say home anymore. I'm just getting back home from the land. How's everybody doing? Just getting back home from the land. And, uh, Number one, I want to give, I want to say thank you all for subscribing and following me through this whole crazy journey. I uh, got a lot of new subscribers, so I wanted to say thank you for that. I'm just going to tell you this, it's going to be one heck of a trip. It's about, we about to go on one heck of a ride. Now... I've been back for maybe an hour, two hours. And I just want to say one thing. Man, if, if you guys are thinking about moving, getting some land, moving off grid, I want to say one thing that I already knew because I've done this before, but I've never done it to this extreme I want to say this right now you're telling yourself how many people are looking into uh what's up Willie how you doing how many people are looking into solar power generators all the stuff you're prepping items all of it all of it Raise your hand, and, and I know I'm starting out, I'm coming in hot and early in the game in this video. Um, how many people are coming in, you got your, your prepping gear, and, and some of this stuff you like, I won't need that. Now, I've been guilty of that myself, so you ain't alone. How many people say, yeah, but you won't need that, though. I mean, that's pushing it. I could get that. I could spend a little extra money on that, but that's, I ain't trying to do it like that. Okay. Let me break something down to you. For I've been gone for six days straight. And uh, after the B class tonight, I'm going back. Lady Led still got to handle business here. So I'm still getting everything put together. I'm going to talk about, yo, it is not enough. You don't got enough. Uh, what's up, Ill Will? Hey, Lori Lewis. You don't have enough. You don't have enough water. I ain't going to say you don't have enough food, <clears throat> but I'm going to throw that out there too. You don't have enough food. Hey, Essie, what's going on, Queen Essie? Crumpool, good to see you, sister. We got a lot to talk about. We got a lot to catch up on. Uh, John Hayes, I would like a solar generator. Would We just had a major ice storm and rain, snow mix. My city went completely out of power recently. Okay. Okay. I'm telling you this right now. Uh... Yo, you do not have enough water. I promise you, I have, I got 50 gallons of water on my RV. 50 gallons of water, even washing up dainty. How you doing, Trailer Park Gardener? Say, I don't dunk for three people, but working on more canned goods and water. Okay, well, I'm telling you right now, do whatever you got to do. Now, what I'm trying to do right now, I'm trying hard to simulate now instead of just talking about it i'm out here truly simulating trying to si simulate 
a grid down situation. So I'm only using, I promise you, I have no power on my land. So I'm only using the resources that I already have. So with certain things that I'm using, like I got solar generators, I got gas generators. Um, How do rain barrels work? I'm going to have you Google that, okay? So I got solar generators. I got gas generators. I got water tanks. That stuff always need to be replenished constantly because you're going to be using it constantly. Hey, uh, Precious SoCal Gardener, you're going to be using it constantly. So what I've been doing to make my stuff last is some of this stuff, you got to put in some, some hand work. You got, hey, small talk, you really got to put in some, some, some sweat. You can't use your solar for everything or you're going to use up your power just in case of an, uh, um, an emergency. If you have an emergency when you really need your power, you're going to have a problem with your heat situation out there. Listen, I, this whole week, it's been 30 degrees is the low. And uh, night before last, it got to 28 degrees was the low. The equivalent of 28 degrees in an RV or a camper is maybe almost a hint better than being in a tent. I, I promise you, outside was 28 degrees. Inside my RV was 30, ooh, ooh, 30, 37 degrees. So from 28 degrees outside, it's about a 10 degree difference. And that's with me running my smallest heaters that only using 250 watts. Family, I'm just, I'm, I'm letting you know. Hey, uh, Ina Stanley say, call Eco and Gigi and you today. Oh, they've been on today? I'm going to have to go check them out. Have you made your house completely run by generators? Uh, no. So, everything I'm doing right now, I'm trying to get, I'm, I'm trying to make sure that I do everything I can myself before I have to use my resources. <sighs> you got to keep your food refrigerated. <laughs> it don't matter how much food you have. If you do not have refrigeration, you in some trouble. Which which generator? What was that? Which generator do I like best? Gas or solar? I always say there is no such thing. Matter of fact, I'm gonna be honest with you, Vio of uh, Vive Girl. That's that question is becoming irrelevant. It's actually a ridiculous question. I ain't saying you're ridiculous. I'm saying you need everything. I don't, I'm not saying you want everything. I'm telling you, you need everything you can get your hands on. If you plan on purchasing land or raw land or you out here or you, you trying to, you need everything. There is no, I like gas better and I can get the gas. No, that's ridiculous. Because look, I got solar. I got lots of solar power. Right, got tons of panels, tons of generators. Guess what today look like? Gray, rainy, cloudy. So I woke up this morning so because it got so cold that I said, okay, I'm going to, I did not look at the weather. I didn't pay attention to the weather, what's gonna to happen tomorrow. So I'm thinking I'm gonna have another big, bright, sunny day, okay? And guess what? I woke up freezing because I cut my heater on high. So, yeah, my RV got a little warm and I was toasty. But I woke up. OK, my uh, uh, van powers, my van powers, uh, 2000 watt generator was dry, bone dry. What's up, broke farmer? Hey, growing what I eat, uh, vibe girls. I understand now. OK. Woke up my generator bone dry. All right. I look outside and it's raining. Now, it's, this is 5, 5.57 in the morning. It's raining. 
So usually around 557, the sun would be just peeking through the, t the top of the trees and I see my solar panels starting to charge my generator. Nothing, nothing. So I burned energy without looking what's going to happen tomorrow. So basically it's like you eating up all your food, but you don't know where your next meal going to come from. That's what just happened to me, okay? So I used up all my solar knowing I'm going to need it. Oh, I used up all my solar. I used up all my propane because guess what? I went out looking for propane in a nearby city. Nobody got propane. You know why nobody got propane in the country? Nobody got propane in the country because everybody in the country live off of propane. Everybody this off grid living in country living. Their life is surrounded and wrapped around propane. So me being in the city, I can go get propane anywhere. Nobody. I went to five different stores. I even stopped at gas stations. Nobody got propane. So I'm like, what the hell am I going to do? Right? Let me get this question real quick. Now that you are on the land, will you have batteries to save your solar power now? Yes. No. I, yeah, your solar power generator is a battery. So, um, I kid you not, you, I ran out of propane, I ran out of solar, so I'm sitting here, um, like, what am I going to do? Wind turbines might be an option. For anybody that's thinking about purchasing wind turbines, you are about to waste, you about to waste more money. This is going to be the dumbest purchase you ever, you did in your life. Does the generator lose power very slowly when sitting idle and not being used? No. No propane gas. Nowhere in the whole, this is a little city now, okay? Uh, Compound 63 said, we have two 500-pound tanks, full on 100 and 8, 820 tanks, 820-pound tanks, not near enough though. You're right. And I'm going to tell you something. With those 500-pound tanks, you need to have a truck come onto your land to refill them because you can't pick up them giant tanks and take them to go get refilled, right? Unless you got some serious equipment. And if you got that kind of equipment, propane is the least of your, your worries. Your 20 pound tanks, guess what? Here, I got 10 propane tanks, 10 five pound propane tanks. That's doing me no good way out there. For the one gallon tanks that I was showing y'all from Ignic, and Flame King, yeah, those, those are for camping only. I got two of those one pound, I got three actually of those one pound tanks. I mean, one gallon tanks. Don't, don't take them with you. No, you need, you need some real, those are for camping for three days. Those are for recreation. Those are, are not for we going off grid and we going to be gone and we don't know when we coming back. I don't know when I'm coming, going back to town. No, you do five pounds and up five pounds. I, I would say the biggest is. I keep saying five pounds. So if I, I keep saying pounds and gallons, y'all, you know, please forgive me. Um, I would even say get a 10 gallon tank. You can still pick them up fairly well. That's my next move, a 10-gallon tank versus the 5-gallon tank because they'll last a little longer and you can still move them around. Anything over that is just too big. I'm telling you right now, you, 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 you don't got enough. And now the season is about to switch up for us, so I'm going to go from heating to cooling, but that's going to be a whole other situation. Um, you say you got 12 5-gallon tanks? That's good to have. You do not have enough. And I'm not talking about you just using your propane as, and your solar like you balling out of control. No, you just don't know. You got to pay attention to your whole weather pattern like a weatherman. Know what the weather going to be like tomorrow when it comes to, hey, uh, Toya Story, how you doing? When it comes to solar, you better know what the days, what the, is it going to be cloudy, partly cloudy? Is it going to be sunny? Fully sunny, what's the temperature, all of that, all of that, 
means something when you're running your solar. Every bit of it. What is the best place to store, store propane a shed? That's completely up to you. I can't give you none of that information. That's that's legal information. And I'm going to have you, you have to Google that one, okay? Because I can't legally tell you where to store your propane. I, I, I can't even, I don't even know if I should be telling you where I store mine. Um, because if you store yours where I store mine and you blow your head off, then I'm liable. So I can't tell you that. Okay. Um, just Google that one. You don't got enough water. I got 55 gallons of water up under my RV in my RV tank. Uh, but it's just not enough. It's just not enough. So today, I use that 55 gallons for emergency water. That's my backup to my backup. So I got, I had two, I'm going to show you. I had two of these, but they the five gallon jugs like this, this is just like a three gallon. This one just sits on my ice maker. This is like a three gallon here, but I got two five gallons of these. Me and Lady Led, this is just me and Lady Led now. Me and my wife went through these like butter. And we use these to pour back in the Berkey to filter it. We use it for drinking. We use, wash your hands. You know, this is kind of like your throw around water. Okay, for cooking after it's filtered, washing your hands, washing up. That stuff goes fast. And I'm, a, I'm going to give you an example of how much water we use, well, I use. I can't say her, but I'm gonna say how much water I use when washing up. It's gonna, it's gonna trip you out. Watch. And I can't make this. I'm glad I got this, this one right here. Watch. Hold on. 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 This is too much. This is actually too much. This is too much. I don't wash up in that much water. That's that's two days worth of wash up water in this saucepan, this little sauce bowl, this little mixing bowl. That's two days worth of water that you're going to wash up in. If you using more water than that, you messing up. And I'm going to tell you something else. When you out there when you out there, you're not there to impress anybody. When you out there on that land, you're not out there to impress anybody. You're out there on your own. It's not a YouTube video. You're not being recorded. It's nobody out there but you and God. So stuff starts getting a little, a little different. For instance, this, was that this morning or yesterday? This morning. I only have enough, look, I only have enough fuel to boil one pot of water. Stick with me because this is going to get real stupid. But if you don't feel me, if you don't believe this, you don't know what you're talking about. Okay. And some, it might be extreme for some people, but this is what it is. Now, I've only been out here for six straight days, so dig with me. Now, I've done this before, but it's all coming back to me again, and it's even more extreme than when me and Lady Leah lived on the other land. Okay, you boil one pot. Let me. I, I want to make a visual for you. Hold on. Hold on. I want you to... No, no, no. Okay, that's good enough. This is perfect. This is perfect right here. This is perfect. I'm going to see if it even got the, the size of it. One quart. One quart is perfect. I'm going to show you what that looked like for real. I'm a, I don't want to make no mess. Hold on. That's perfect. Hold on. One quart saucepan. Okay. Y'all know what one quart is. That's the... That's the large, large canning jar, okay? So that's one quart saucepan. Let me see if I got a quart jar over there. So it really gives you an idea. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Okay. This, the larger size canning jar, right? Ball's jar. Let me show you this. Okay. So you know, I'm not bluffing. I spilled too much, but y'all get it. One quart, one quart jar of water. Okay, both of those go in there. You got a situation on your hands. Here's the situation that I, I, I ran into today, which kind of changed my eating habits real quick too. What, whatever you're about to eat, you got to wash those dishes up because now you're dealing with ants. You ain't going, you ain't in no house. You in an RV, a camper, or a tent. You don't got termite um, protection. You ain't in no house. So here's the other thing. It's real animals out here. <laughs> okay, my neighbor told me we got bobcats, black bears, rattlesnakes, copperheads, now, I'm getting rid of beavers here, but we talking about rattles. I said, man, rattlesnakes. I know about copperheads. I see them all the time. Rattlesnakes. He said, yeah, yeah, rattlesnakes. Yeah, they everywhere. You know, be careful before you lift any of the junk in the woods. Okay. So you have to be careful what you eat. Don't drop no food. Only eat in one designated area because it's real now. This is like me telling y'all about camp. Now it's real, real, real for me. Okay, here's the other thing. You got your, you got your one pot of water. You're trying to spare your fuel, your propane or your wood, whatever it is, okay? It's cold outside, so you're not cooking outside. Normally, you, I say, hey, just use wood. You're not going out there at eight o'clock at night and you cannot see your hand in front of your face. Something could be right here sniffing your berries and you won't even know if it don't touch you. So this how dark it is out there on my land. I'm not going out there to cook. I'm not going out there to wash up. So everything I have to do is have to be done inside. Now, doing it inside, you're taking a risk because wild animals smell that food and come in. My thing is I had about 12 reasons why I may make it out of that situation alive. OK, so I hadn't eaten all day. I had been talking on, on YouTube for five or six hour video. So it's time for me. I got to get something to eat in my system. All right. So I cook. Now, after you cook, after you eat, and I'm using one pan, the same pot that I cook in is what I eat out of. The same spoon that I stir my food with is the same spoon that I'm going to eat with. Now, now you got to clean that up. You can't leave that overnight or you're going to come, you're going to wake up to an anthill in your kitchen or your RV or your tent. Forget about lions, tigers, and bears. The ants will tear you apart. So you going to wake up to ants because ants will smell it even sooner than the bears and the coyotes, wolves, bobcats, and stuff will. And they'll find their way right into your dog on RV. They don't care about doors, son. They like Doc on Back to the Future. Roads, <laughs> where we're going, we don't need roads, okay? Ants don't need no permission to come in. And they would destroy, once they're in there, you ain't getting them out unless you start using chemicals. Now you got to sleep in that chemically, chemically led uh, uh, facility that you just made. So you ain't just killing the ants, you're killing yourself too. Easiest way is watch where you eat, clean up after yourself immediately. If you drop a crumb, don't be like, I'll just get that when I'm done. Get that up right now. Some crumbs came off your cracker, get them up. Right now, stop eating, get that up. Okay, so you cooked. Now it's time to clean up, right? The same water, that one quart of water that you got, 
you're going to wash the dishes with that. So the you only got so much fuel. You got to count your fuel. You got to count your propane. You can't just be like, I'm going to burn all the propane just to boil some water for coffee. Boil some more water because you're using your water and you're wasting your propane. You're using two sets of energy, your water and your, and your propane. So instead of doing that, you got to kill two birds with one stone. You always got to be thinking about energy conservation on a regular basis. Number one, do I even need to eat that much? No, because you ain't going to get full and stuff. You got stuff to do out there and you ain't going to get it done on the land when you got a full belly full of stuff. You ain't. So just eat enough to, you know, you can still taste the food on your tongue pretty much, but you got stuff to do. You got one quart of water. You pour half a quart. You pour half a quart. Let me, let's do this right. Let's do this right. Try not to spill no more of this, my example. Okay? You pour, this is all the water you're working with. You pour half of that in your pot. Stick with me. You take that water, you pour it in your pot. You heat your water up. Barely, right when it get to steaming, you ain't got to sit there and watch it bubble for half an hour like you cooking two hot dogs. Y'all know how we do. No. Soon as it get to steaming, it's good and hot. You wash your dishes with that. You wash your dishes and depending on what you just cooked, okay, it might get a little crazy. All right. All right. You cook with that water. Do you throw that? How many people will say they throw that water out? How many people will throw that water out after you done washing the dishes? Okay, sweet Zari say, okay, I will throw it out. Newlywed trucker say, not me. Now remember, it's noodles and it's, it's hamburger meat. <laughs> it might be all kind of little crumbs from what you just ate in there. Okay, a little bit of cheese sauce. Uh, Judy said, hello, I'm still loving this information for years and thank you for all your time. Thank you, Judy. Uh, Stone Dodger, how you doing? How many other people would throw that water out from washing the dishes? Peaches Rodriguez, I would recycle that water. Thank you, Peaches. All right, I said this years ago. I've been giving y'all this game for years, and I'm going to show you again. Say, yeah, I would have gotten, it would have gotten tossed. Okay, CeCe, no. That ain't what you do. Uh, no, don't throw it out. Correct. Filter the water. You use these. Go to the dollar store. Y'all know these only cost a couple dollars at any dollar store. You take that smallest one. You take, it might have noodles, hamburger meat, everything in that boy, right? You filtering through that one. You filter that a couple times, over and over. Now it's clean. You throw out the food and the junk and the gunk. You might want to do it again. Okay. Now you throw out the rest of that food, the junk and gunk. Then you take you a cotton towel, t-shirt, Whatever it is, you know, I always tell y'all to keep them cotton towels. I don't got them on me now. I always got them, but they on the land. Take that cotton towel. You put it in a bowl again, filter it again. And now what you do after that, watch this. You use that. Half clean water. It's still warm now. Couple drops of soap. Don't go crazy with the soap. Shower time. You might smell like stroganoff. Okay. Uh, you might smell like stroganoff and hamburger meat. 
but you're going to be clean. Now, I didn't double dip on my propane. I only used enough to get my dish wash and hurry up and wash your dishes. You ain't got many. And then turn around, filter that up real quick, and then wash up. Shave. This morning, I shaved. And I shaved in some old stroganoff water. I smell freaking delicious. I can't make this up because um, if you don't, you're going to start running out of supplies real, real fast. Remember, we still got a whole nother half a quarter of that water. What is we going to wait to do that? You might have to get you a good drink. It, you might have to wash up for tomorrow. Keep, if you need that water, use it. But save it if you have to. Only use a half a quart at a time. Right? Now, all right, after you don't wash your junk, your pits, tits, and balls, and you're done, now it's time to, okay, examine this water. Now it got body particles floating around in it, stroking off, okay? Everything now is about done. If you don't have a water... A purifier, when I say water purifier, I'm talking about if you don't have something to distill that, you should have a garden set up on your land immediately. And that's what we're going to talk about as well. I'm actually home to do the B class and I'm loading up all my trees that's in pots and I'm taking them out back to the land. So you should have a garden set up by now and all that water that you just used need to be going in your pots. Because you need to be growing some food. Because what I just learned, the closest grocery store from my land, that's going to use a lot of my gas in my truck. <laughs> Ain't no just running to the store to get some chips. Oh, I got hot dogs, forgot my chips. F them chips. You can Ain't no, I, I got mustard, but no ketchup. You're going to have a mustard dog tonight, then. But... This is the true game. And I'm telling you, some people are going to say, gross. You must be crazy. Yo, your boy is washing up over here with uh, 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 cereal water. I'm telling you right now. Once you got a choice, because this is what I'm thinking about. I just use, I heated up one pot of water. Then I recycled the water. To wash up in same said water. You know why? Be and not reheating it. Because I'm thinking, I need that propane to last me all night tonight. Because they talking about it's dropping down to 28 degrees tonight. I don't want to waste no propane. I don't want to waste no gasoline. I don't want to waste none of my fossil fuels. Because in emergency, that's going to keep me alive. I don't want to use any of my solar power from my solar power generator. I don't care how big you got a solar power generator because tomorrow it's going to be raining and cloudy for the next two days. So I'm sitting there like, okay, yo, I've been sleeping in this hat and in my jacket for the last, remember I'm home now though, for the last three days. Okay, I usually don't sleep with socks on. I got on my uh, thermal socks that I have in my bug out bag. I literally put my uh, thermal socks on because I was like, yo, I can't risk it. I'm under three sleeping bags, uh, a, a couple of uh, Goodwill comforters, old quilts, and I'm sleeping like a baby. You wake up in the middle of the night, you got to pee. It's going to be a little chilly. But you got to do what you got to do. And you know what, uh, newlywed, um, you say you have to be more frugal when living off grid. You know, I won't even call it frugal. That's a city word. That's a word we use in the city being frugal. That ain't even frugal. We need to come up with a whole nother word for what, what we out there doing. Um, let me see. You Right. Some uh, Who just said that? Twelfth man said yeah, people don't need as much as they think. And I'm glad you switched the subject onto that, okay? I'm going to tell you this. Another reason I'm home besides the B class, 
I'm home because I brought a lot of stuff back here that I absolutely just right now is like, this is taking up space. I don't need this. So if it's taking up space and I don't need it and I have nowhere to store it, it got to come back to the house. Now I'm coming to grab things that I do need. Here you go. And I'm going to grab it. Another visual. I got to show you this visual because a lot of people is new and they haven't seen this. Hold on. I got it set up ready, ready to get loaded up in the truck. All right. I call myself <clears throat> thinking that I got solar. I got propane. I do not need my little wood stove. I got solar. I got propane. I, I'm thinking to myself, you don't need your little wood stove. You don't need that. Leave that home. Right? I tell myself to leave that home. Stupidest move a, 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 a landowner could do. If you do not have a wood stove, you're doing it wrong. If you do not have a wood stove, you're doing it wrong. I'm going to tell you why. This warmed up my whole big old giant 20-foot tent, my canvas tent. Y'all seen that? No insulation. Ain't nothing keeping that heat in but canvas. If I would have had that and retrofitted that into my RV, I wouldn't be worried about propane. I wouldn't be worried about uh, gas. I wouldn't be worried about solar because I live on almost 10 acres of wood. I got firewood in front of my RV for my fire pit, which could have been keeping me warm all night and toasty and not even have to worry. Uh, let's see. This, right, right. Who said, newlywed said that heat would have ran you out of that RV. It almost ran me out of the tent. So I know in the RV, it would have been on the one. I, I Myra, hey, Myra McClain. I got I, all my axes. I got two axes here. All my other axes is on the land. This wood stove, as soon as I got home, the first thing I grabbed to go on my truck, it's this wood stove. I got a lot of stuff. I said more water. I'm taking my 55 gallon drums to catch rainwater. Uh, my wood stove. Um, I got some other stuff out there. My Bible. My Bible. Um, I'm going to tell you why. My Bible. <laughs> I got I brought my Bible because I noticed something. When I'm in the city, I'm going to tell y'all what I, what I dealt with coming back into my city. And then I'm going to go into why I, I grabbed my Bible too and put it on my pile of stuff to go with me. When I came back into the city, the first thing I noticed was cars everywhere. Cars everywhere. People everywhere. Stupid driving, car accidents, noise everywhere, noise, noise. People honking the horn because they ain't going fast enough or slow enough. Or horns, cars, people everywhere. I get off on my exit. Traffic, booming systems, loud rock and roll. Everybody got their windows down. Somebody smoking sweet, sweet Chiba. I don't want to smell that. This dude's smoking dope. I don't want to smell this stuff. So as I'm trying to drive to navigate my way to my house, I'm taking in a bit of everybody else's life. I can smell her cigarette. I can smell his weed. I think I can smell what his rock is cooking. 
I can smell all this. I can hear his variety of music. I can hear her variety of music. I can hear the hammering of the construction going on in the road. I can hear all this noise and I'm just sitting here. I've been, before I get there, I pull in my driveway. Three of my neighbors, what day is this, Wednesday? Three of my neighbors are cutting their grass at the same damn time. Y'all, I don't have to prove that. I told y'all that every time I do a live outside, they cutting their grass, we whacking the grass, making love to the grass. I don't know what else they do with smoking the grass. I don't know. I don't know what this infatuation is with it. But I get home, listen. Can you hear that? I know, I know this camera is good, but can you hear that low murmur? Listen. I've been home now for two hours. They all still cutting the MF in grass. I've been gone for six days. I almost want to bring me to tears, man. I've been gone for six days. Days and the only damn thing I've heard in six days is eagles, hawks, coyotes, birds, cats, oh wild little farm cats, birds, the wind. A train in the off in the distance. I have not seen people unless I feel like going out of my land to see them. I don't hear nobody cut no freaking grass for eight hours. I don't hear no weed whackers. I don't hear none of that crap because even if they are, the trees from the land is blocking it. Let me, let me stop one more time. I hear Rudy. I brought my rooster out there with me. He crows. Even he don't crow that much because he's like, damn, it's quiet. I don't want to dis disturb this groove. So off in the distance, everybody got roosters. You can faintly hear rooster calls throughout the day, muffled through the trees in the wilderness. So you hear, <whistles> so every time they crow, Rudy crow, because he just calling back. That's all you hear. I don't got to hear nobody mouth. I don't got to hear nobody arguing. I don't got to. When I did go into town to look for propane, all the stores are so small. It's not that many people climbing over top of each other trying to get the last Barbie doll and bullshit. It was just beautiful. I walk in this store like, like where's all the people at? I'm so used to raggedy carts and trying to we fighting against this dude pulling half the cart i'm pulling the other side pick up the belt the belt is stuck down in the middle of the green pick the belt up then pick the baby seat up then grab that i'm gonna pull this way y'all know what i'm talking about you in one of these stores and you you team up and get an alliance with a whole stranger just trying to separate the damn shopping carts after y'all able to separate the shopping carts and both of them got bad wheels, y'all damn near want to high five each other. Good job. Like this is what this be, this is what this come to. So I'm out on this land. I don't hear the noise of electricity and power refrigerators and washing machines and you know the everyday normal click clack that the white noise you hear in the background, like my refrigerator running now, and I'm like, wow, I ain't heard that in a, in a week. And it let me know us picking the name Freedom Acres is exactly, the name came to us. We didn't just choose a name, it just came. Freedom. This is like freedom. Acres of freedom. Freedom Acres. There go the name right there. There's the name. So, 
being out there, a lot of stuff starts changing. A lot of stuff in your head start changing. And the reason why I said my Bible, grab my Bible when I come back home, is because we are so distracted by the world and we so constantly hearing noises and every noise you hear in your house, every noise you hear outside, every car to drive down the street, every time somebody headlights past your house, tail lights past your house, every time you hear a boom, every time something distracts you and makes you look this way, make you look that way, make you look up, make you listen closer. When you're constantly distracted all throughout your day, and then let's not talk about social media or let's not talk about your favorite television show. You're constantly distracted. When you're on the land and it's that quiet, You will look at some YouTube, but I just like, man, I looked at all the videos. It's over now, you know. OK. Now what? I can't wash up again. I don't want to waste that. I don't want to cook again because that'll make you start you, you bored. So you start eating again. But now you can't do like you at home. You can't do like you at home and start eating again because you like, no, I got to I got to save my rations of food. Can't just go drinking all kind of water. You ain't did no work. You don't do that. What else should I be doing? That's a pure sign and message. You need to be having your head in that book. Because now you can concentrate. You can open that book up. And not have no distractions. How many times have you been praying over your food and then one of the kids giggle and you have to stop? Hey, didn't I say stop that? We talking to the Lord. Sorry, Father. Or how many times you read the Bible and then you hear, Oh, that was a car crash out there. Oh, uh, somebody look out the window. That sound like somebody hit my car. What was that? Every time you hear a noise, boom, all the lights went out. Think the generator done blowed up. Uh, somebody hit the telephone pole down the street, blow the generator up. Now the lights is out for two blocks. Every five minutes, there's a distraction. Every time you open your Bible or every time you praying or every time you just talking to the Father, something pops up and we don't think it's the devil because it's everyday stuff that you don't think is the devil it's stuff around you you know what i'm saying it's like oh that was just a car skid or somebody racing out on the road out there somewhere far or it's always something we just write that off as normal that's natural human behavior and it's not that is I'm going to say darker powers trying to stop you from getting some kind of enlightenment in your spirit. That's that's how I look at it. Right. So while I'm out there and it's quiet, it's peaceful. I'm not on YouTube. Y'all see, I ain't done no YouTube video in a couple days. I was like, I just I, I can't explain it to you enough. So I'm just sitting out there soaking it up like an old biscuit in gravy. You know, you. Sit that biscuit in that gravy. You don't eat it. Just watch that biscuit keep on swelling up. Or like a Cheerio in a toilet bowl. That Cheerio will turn that big but if you don't flush that toilet. I'm just sopping up that quiet, that peace. And I said to myself, this is a time I could be reading the book without being distracted. Nothing here is to stop me. Nobody is going to walk up and ask me, hey, you want, your, you want your leaves raked? None of that. You can't get to my land. The only reason you coming back here on my land is to do me harm. So I'm not expecting anybody. I haven't seen anybody in six days. It's weird. It's, it's a weird, beautiful feeling 
to know if I feel like engaging with other people, I can just leave my land and go engage with other people. If I don't, I'm in my safe place. Not only do I not have to engage with them, I also don't have to hear them or hear their habits or hear anything of their activities. I could just be, it could just be me, Mother Nature, and Father God. And, and that's all it, it, it's going to be. And when you out there like that, there's nothing you can say about it. You didn't make the rules up. It's that much peace. So, if there is no other reason why you should come out of your, your local city and kind of reach out, farther out, because it's a lot of people even being born today in this generation, they don't even know what PC is. They've never heard quiet. Ain't that funny? Since you, since you were conceived, think about this, because you can hear in the womb. You recognize your father. You recognize your mother. You recognize your siblings. You recognize your grandma, grandpa, aunts, uncles, best friends. You recognize all these voices muffled in the womb until you born. That's why them babies come out kind of looking at you a little crazy. And they look like they like they, they call them old souls. So that baby like, so you my uncle. You a crazy mug, man. That's why the baby looking at you, stupid. Because he know you stupid. Just look at this little boy looking at me. Like he know me. He do. He been listening to your loud mouth for 12 months. I mean, for nine months. So since you were conceived, all you heard was noise in a city. In a city life, all you heard was noise. You heard the noise inside your home. You heard the noise in traffic. You heard the noise in the hospital. You heard, all you've been hearing your whole life is noise. If you took somebody from the freaking Bronx, if you took somebody from the Bronx, no, no, no jokes, okay? From any big city, any big city, and put them on my land for 72 hours, it'll probably, their head would explode. I get fairly a decent amount of peace here, but being out there, it's like it's like I'm, I'm on some kind of high. I kid you not, it's it's a euphoria that you just don't you don't have words for. You know, people out here smoking drugs and doing drugs, but they don't know you can get high on peace and tranquility. You'll get just as high off of all these. Drugs that they got, these street drugs that they got, you will get just as high off of peace and tranquility and quiet. Because it lets your mind open up, just like people people take drugs for their mind can open up and do other things and think about other things. If you go from the city, if you go from a loud, noisy, busy city with lots of people and crap going on, pluck them out of there. And put them on my land for 72 hours. They whole cranium will explode. Because their brain will not know how to process that much peace, quiet, tranquility. They won't even know how to process that. They get so antsy. That's like you see a drug, you see a drug head at the grocery store. What's up, man? Can I wash your time? He can't keep still. You see that? When they when they high on drugs, every drug dealer, I mean every drug user, they can't keep still. They're scratching, itching, arm waving, beatboxing, uh, moonwalking. They can't keep still because they high off that drug. If I plucked you out and put in all this noisy city and put you on my land, you will be looking around constantly. Because you won't see nobody. You're going to constantly be looking for people. You're going to see birds. You're going to see animals you ain't never seen before. All of this new information is like I put you on the moon. I put you on the moon and you seeing space aliens. That's what it's going to be like. Because you don't know. You ain't never seen this bird. What the hell is that? Is that a frog, snake, a bat, rat, cat? I don't know what that is. You're going to hear noises you ain't never heard before. Sounds, animals. 
it'll be the equivalent if you took a country boy from the setting that I'm telling you about and put them in the middle of the Bronx. Your head going to explode. You are not you. Everybody keep wondering why the people from the city always be looking over their shoulder and constantly twitching. Because if you come from the country and you so laid back and you ain't got your head on swivel and somebody rip your whole back pocket off your whole whole Levi symbol missing with your wallet, son. They ain't just taking your wallet, your whole pocket. You ever had your, your pockets ripped out or turn your dog on front pockets in the bunny ears? Bah, that's what that is. That's somebody come up from the back, go in your front pockets, bunny ears. You ain't going to be able to understand this information. You're going to be like, but I didn't do nothing. What he, what he, what he looking at me for? What he try to rob me for? You ain't going to understand. So I'm on the opposite side of that spectrum. Pure quiet. The only time I hear a laugh is when I laugh. The only time... You know, I hear somebody pass gas, I pass gas. And I'm looking around, I pass gas, I look over like, I, I ain't got nobody say, man, say excuse me, I heard you. No, that was me. That was me. I even started talking to myself. I see how, how mountain men kind of go crazy, you know, and start talking to themselves. Because I was, I was like, um, I was like Smeagol on Lord of the Rings uh, for the last couple days. Like, oh man, you nasty. Man, that wasn't me. Yes, it was, man. I heard you. No, it wasn't. Oh, oh, open the window. Boy, you stinking. I'm talking to myself. Like, I don't know if this, I don't know if that was healthy or not. I was like, okay, I'm, I'm talking to myself too much. So I'm going to go ahead and call Lady Led and let her know I'm okay. I need to hear another voice before I start looking for the precious. <laughs> <laughs> I start, oh, it's the precious, oh, the precious. I said, let me call another human being. So, <laughs> golem. So, yeah, I said, <clears throat> this, this is the equivalent of a beautiful woman. You ever seen somebody so beautiful you can't stop looking at them? You can't stop wondering what's on their mind. Like, God, you're so beautiful. I can't imagine what you're thinking about. You're so beautiful. I bet you ain't thinking about none of the stuff I'm thinking about today. Like, ooh, I need to lose some weight. Ooh, I need to uh, pull this hair from under my chin. Ooh, I need to... You, I think I see people so beautiful. I'm like, they ain't thinking about none of that. They probably thinking about, uh, God said he was supposed to bring me back to heaven today. So I'm just waiting. I'm not sitting at the bus stop waiting on, sucking on lollipop, waiting on God to bring me back. And so see somebody that beautiful and you can't stop wondering what they thinking about. You just staring at them till they look at you and you look like a creep looking at them with their grin. Ugh, what you looking at? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. My bad. That's how I've been for six days. I just been sitting out there. Everybody keep wondering, what you out there doing on the land? Nothing. Not a daggone thing. I'm just listen that. Hear that? Hear that, what I'm talking about? Noise. Noise, man. Ding dong. I'm out there on that land. Hold on, let me see. If, hold on, y'all. Hold on. That's what I'm talking about. I rest my case. I rest my case. Ding dong, ding dong, ding dong. 
Is uh is is Willie here? No. The significance of looking at that beautiful person and wondering what's on their mind is just the same as me being on that land and just wondering. So many questions in my head, like, you know, I'm part of this. And then the birds that fly down and land on a tree and they kind of, it's almost like they coming to see me, like they they coming to check me out. I know that sound crazy. I know it sound crazy. But it's almost like, you know how you move into a neighborhood and the neighbors come, well, if you're in a decent neighborhood, come welcome you. I ain't talking about robbing you or casing the joint. I'm talking about decent neighbors is coming to welcome you to the neighborhood. It's almost like the birds and the cats that I've seen, because I see some wild, feral cats everywhere. It's almost like they just came to holler at me, like, you know, so you the new dude, huh? All right, all right, okay, okay. I, I got this one cat, um, I named him Cow Cat. I, it just came to my head as soon as I looked out the window and seen him. I hit the window, get on out of here. He looked at me, I think if he had a middle finger, he would have gave it to me. I hit that window of my RV, get on out of here, get now. I did it on the old, old man's like, get on out of here. You get. I don't know why, where that voice came from. I guess the land is starting to transform me. But you get now, you get. Ha! I, I don't know. I, I don't know where that came from. But the cat looked at me like, man, so you the one they all talking about. This the dude, these the people. Eh, we're going to have to work on him, but he'll do. I go outside, and me and Rudy chilling. I'm throwing food at Rudy. Here come Cow Cat. Just walk past like, y'all good? Yeah, we all right. You probably wondering why I call him Cow Cat. He has the exact pattern of that Chick-fil-A cow. <laughs> they say eat more chicken. That perfect black and white patch, them little black blob shaped patches on his white back. What's up, man? Hey, How you doing? Not a good word. Okay, give me some love. Because I might not see you. Ugh. How you doing, guy? Mm -hmm. All right. So Cow Cat got these perfectly black patches on his white body. He ain't like a normal black and white cat. He got cow patches, cow pattern, right? Then it's this yellow cat. He big and gold. He kind of look like a damn mountain lion. And I wasn't sure if he was or not because I'm in South Carolina, okay? So before I be approaching stuff and every little step I take, I have to watch out because I just don't come out the RV all willy nilly. I know Gigi's natural and eco. I know they, I know they down in Florida. I know they understand what I'm saying. You just don't be walking out all out the freaking RV. Hello world. Here I am to save the day. You don't walk out your RV like that because yeah, there's no people out here. But I really, truly now live in an enchanted forest. And I don't know what else lives here besides me. It ain't too many people around here. Right? So, right. Snakes. There might be some snakes. I've heard coyotes fighting one night. Foxes. I've seen big, gigantic... Oh. Big, gigantic buck deer. I, I videotaped it right at the last minute. Huge buck walking across my land. You know, I got deer here, but you never see too many bucks. It's rare. But the first deer I saw on this land was this huge, maybe the biggest buck I have ever seen. 
And I was just wondering, like, he's so big. I don't know how his antlers fit through the forest without getting tangled up. Because when me and Lady Led walking through it, we constantly moving vines and sticks and brush. And he just walking through like a freaking tank. And his freaking rack is up here like this. I'm like, how is he doing that? It was beautiful. Which brings me to my other point. How many people, I'm going to, I know this going to hit below the belt, but I got to be honest, okay? How many people do not believe in protecting yourself? All right, African. They, they go Gigi Natural right there. African dreaming in the house. I see y'all. How many people do not believe in um, protecting yourself via 2A? That's as far as I'm going to go. How many people don't believe in protecting yourself via 2A? Nobody, everybody believes in protecting themselves. The reason I'm asking this question is because if you, if you, are looking for land. Okay, changing your mind on that one. Victorious, yeah, you should. I'm going to tell you why. Because if you, uh, let me see. All right, Rucker Homestead. If you plan on purchasing land and you're out there and ain't no people out there and you do not believe in the two, I call it 2A protection. That's what I'm going to call it. If you don't believe in 2A protection, you may want to rethink your reasons for being out on, on land. Because it won't be people that you have to worry about. You're going to have to worry about the animals more than you're going to have to worry about the people. I'm not saying just be walking around, you know, I got a shotgun in my hand. I'm going to just go and shoot whatever move. No, no, no. I got a close friend of mine <clears throat> that lives fairly near where I, we just purchased land. And he just caught a black bear on his trail camp. Me living here, I see coyotes and fox and deer every single night. If I showed you all of my, my cameras from my, my house here, I could let you watch at least two hours worth of animals crossing my, my yard for days and weeks on end. I could literally let you watch that for two hours. I could make a full two hour video of letting you see the night creatures that come on, on at my house right here. So imagine what's going on. And this is in a city. It's a house every doggone 50 yards, right? Imagine what's going out on out there in the middle of nowhere. They're not scared of humans out there. If you come out here and see a coyote, you might scare it off. They're not used to seeing human beings out there. They're not scared. Fox, here's another one. Even, let's say they are scared out there. You don't know if you're, this fox or this raccoon or this coyote is rabbit. You don't know if it got rabies or not. Maybe it is normally scared of you, but if it has rabies like they usually do, they attack you and they, they out of their mind. They attack anything moving when they got rabies. A, a, a fox, a coyote, all of that. They attack whatever is moving. Everybody see that news bulletin of that little girl? I mean, that yeah, that little girl was waiting for a school bus and got attacked by a raccoon. Raccoon ain't had no beef with the little girl. It had rabies. 
they don't know what they're doing. They out of their mind. Look at crackheads. Look at dope heads at the, at the Walmart parking lot. They don't know what they're doing. They out of their mind on drugs. So it ain't no different for no animal. You walking through the woods, enjoying your land, enjoying your stuff. And I kid you not, you might walk up on. I, we got so many. We have so many animal dens on just a little piece of my land that we've walked. Holes burrowed into sides of hills and the ground. And everything live in this freaking thing. I don't want to have to be out in the middle of the woods and I'm like a quarter of a mile away from my house out in the woods and this thing is built for the woods. This animal is built. It lives here. I don't want to compete with this animal on his turf. It's my land, but he lives here. So it's going to have to, I can't hand-to-hand -hand combat with this, this coyote, fox, bear, whatever it's going to be. So I need an advantage. With that being said, yo, you got to come prepared. Me and Lady Led, we don't leave the RV. I don't care if you got to go out there and dump your, your wash-up water. <laughs> dump your wash-up water. You only got on your pajama pants. Don't go out this door without something that make a whole bunch of noise. If you ain't going out there with no hip firecracker, don't go out there. Let It can wait. Don't. Here's one right here. I'm running out of solar. True, this is a true story. This is maybe three or four days ago. I'm running out of solar, and I'm like, I don't want to use up the rest of my solar, but... I need the solar to keep my lights on because I'm not using my RV cabin lights at all. I'm not using no energy on my RV. So I'm like, I need this solar and I'm running out of juice. I got my other solar generator out there. This one is out of juice. All I need to do is open my door, go about 10 feet, grab my generator and come back in or go out 10 feet, grab my lantern and come back in. That's all I need to do. And I got light for the rest of the night. I looked out there. And you know what you can see? This is what you see. This is a true story. And GG Natural and Eco Neighbor, I know y'all know for sure because y'all staying in a camper too. When it's that dark outside your RV and there's no lights on outside, it's only you, God, and the stars. I don't even know where the moon been. I ain't got no moonlight. You know what you look out when you look out the window? You looking at yourself because it's so dark outside that your window turns into a mirror. I can damn near shave in how crisp I can see myself when I look out into the darkness. When I look out into the darkness of my land, I can't see anything out there. I can only see my own reflection. Then I got to ask myself, is it worth it? Is it worth it me risking something out there? Because you can't see it. Even if you got a hand flashlight, if you got a handheld flashlight, you only got 10 feet to go grab whatever you got to grab. You holding a, a, a 10 foot, I mean a hand flashlight, that's one hand that you can't use because it's holding your light. If you drop that light to defend yourself, now you can't see what you're defending yourself against. If you got on a headlamp, them always kind of cock out. You just got to be smart about it. Like, that's all too much thinking and too much ridiculousness for me. You know what? I ain't going to have no light tonight, so it's time to go to bed. I ain't, the light, I ain't got no more energy for light. It's time to go to bed. That's It's a wrap. You got to start thinking real slick like. You got to start weighing because it's Real danger out here, right? It's just like you being in the city and you know you just order some Chinese food, but the only Chinese food restaurant is in the hood at that one part where they hang on the corner and it's always some blood stains on the sidewalk for some reason. You got to ask yourself, <laughs> how hungry 
am I? How delicious is that Chinese food? Do I really want that shrimp fried rice that bad to risk my whole life? Call them back and be like, look, uh, can you cancel that last order? Ah, uh, yeah, I, yeah. Sorry about that. All right. It's not worth your life. It's not, it's not worth your life. So when you out here, you got to start really thinking about your worth, your real worth. Like, is this worth my life? I'm putting my whole life at risk to do what? To go out here so I can have a little bit of extra light. So I can watch a few more YouTube videos. Or to recharge my phone. Dump stuff. No, I'm, every day I've been like this. Do I really want to do that? No. So now I got to constantly think about tomorrow. I got to constantly think two hours ahead of everything I do. I'm constantly looking up the sun. I got about three more hours of daylight. I need to get this, 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 and this done before that sun hit the tip of that tree or whatever after that ain't going to get done till tomorrow because the, the night creatures is out here. You know, I'm out here for six days and I instantly turned into a freaking caveman. I instantly turned into a caveman because I'm, my senses is heightened. And I'm, my decision making, want to hear something, listen to this, <clears throat> true story. I said, I'm going to celebrate. I'm going to open up me some, uh, 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 some Hennessy and I'm going to have me a little shot of Hennessy and Coke and I'm going to celebrate. I'm out here on my land, it's paid off, it's paid for, we living for free out here. I'm about to celebrate, toast to myself. <clears throat> that bottle's still in that, in that cabinet, in that RV, you want to know why? Because I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> I need to have my wits about me. At all time. I can't be out here half cocked. Literally and figuratively. I can't be out here half cocked. So if I'm out here indulging a little bit on my own and I'm kind of, that make me sleepy. I get the giggles and I start doing dumb stuff like going outside to pee and all of that. That ain't going to work out well. So I said, I, I grabbed my bottle like, yeah, I'm, I poured the whole thing. Yeah, I'm about to, I thought about it. I looked out that window and all I saw was me thinking about that darkness. I'm gonna let, I'll put that lid back on that. I'll do that tomorrow when some, some lights is outside. But then when daylight came, I was like, I'm hearing animals I never heard before. I'm like, oh, I put that jar, I had that jar. Uh, I need to figure out what the hell that is. Let me, uh, let me figure out what the hell that is because that, that, I ain't never heard that one before. I need to have my wits about me. So every day, I've been like, what was that? <laughs> I can't be sipping and tripping while stuff out there, you know, think I'm delicious. I mean, I am. But I don't want them to know that. You know, I done already bathed in stroganoff water. I don't want him <laughs> some some uh, uh, skillet dinners, some uh, hamburger helper water. I don't want them to get, get hip to me like that. So I'm like, okay, if I have to go hand in hand with one of these animals or even a person for that matter, I can't be out here all oh, willy nilly, like I got some Takashi Six Nine security around me. I it's, it's just it's just me and Mr. Mossberg. I got to be on top of my thing, you know. My homeboy Gaston Glock is over here. Okay, my pet Glock Wallers. Y'all good? Need some kibble? You fool? Okay, it's just us. I I grab both of my my Glock Wallers and I tell them just the two of us. 
We can make it, you and I, just the two of us, you and I. Me and my Glockwallers, I feed them a little kibble till they full and pray to God they don't have to start spitting up at somebody. That's it. Just the two of us. <laughs> Ooh, way on the mountain, way up high, just the two of us, you and I. So you got to have your wits about you at all times. At all times. So how you eat, you can't just sit up and get fat bellied and just lay back and hit the remote and cut on the TV. Ain't no TV. And you can't have that belly all plump. So you, you got to be able to move. You better be able to run. You just kind of got to be ready. So I kind of been like not eating. I told her, she said, what you eat today? I said, I ain't ate nothing today. I did a video for almost six hours, so I ain't ate nothing. What you drink? Some coffee. Boy, if you don't go drink some water before you pass out. Everything is different out there. So I'm going <clears throat> I'm to let you know, you're going to need your knife. I know a lot of y'all be like, I don't need that old uh, specialized buoy knife. I don't need that Rambo knife. I don't need that pocket knife. Every time you go in a store, you see a, how many people now raise your hand now? Cause I know even the ladies gonna raise your hand on this one. I wanna hear from the ladies too. How many times you walking through one of the stores and you see, you see a um a pocket knife, you be like, oh, oh I, man, that's, that's that, and it's only $20. Then you say, I don't need that. I promise you, you do. I got pockets. I got a pocket full of stones. I kid you not. I have everything. This is what I'm bringing from my land right now. I keep me a handful of them. I got a knife in the back, knife in the back, gun on the top. I don't want to have to spread out that gangster lean. I got something for everybody, man. It's with me out there, it's like Halloween, son. Hey, look, hey, I'm reaching the bowl because I got something for everybody. Don't come over here with that. Because I got something for everybody. I got a whole mix of weaponry on me. You don't want to come to my house when my porch light is on. Telling you. If you see those knives in the store. Pocket knife. Even if it's a cheap knife. You know one of them Ozark trail knives. It's one of them Harbor Freight knives. If it's a man. Man go and grab it. The Gigi said, and hey, my Glock Waller. <laughs> you don't want to hear my Glock Waller go to barking. Them boys nasty. You don't want to hear them go to, go to barking. I'm telling you, both of them nasty. Starsky and Hutch. You don't want them, man. <laughs> you don't want to mess with them. Don't go trying to pet them. They ain't, they ain't them kind of dogs. My Glock Wallers, they bite. They, they just security only. They ain't for show. Oh, can I, can I, can I hold him? Can I pet him? No, he don't like that. <laughs> he did. These ain't those kind of pets. Can I feed him? They fool. <laughs> nah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Tubs and Crockett. You don't want that. You don't want that kind of heat on you. These ain't no ankle biters. These, these are what I call surgeons because they will perform surgery. They ain't no ankle biters, son. My, my Glock Wallers ain't no ankle biters. They are surgeons. They remove pieces off, off of folks. That's all I'm saying. I'm going to leave that where it is. But I promise y'all this. <clears throat> if you get that land, Start your garden immediately. I'm about to go out here and grab all these trees and I'm about to start digging up trees, digging up plants, digging up everything, taking it out there. I never put all these blueberries in the ground because I knew what we was about to do. Everybody kept saying, where are you going to plant all them blueberries? Why are they still in the pot? Couldn't tell you then, but now you know. All them blueberries that's in the pot on my land, that's why I never took them out the pot. I knew, I knew this time was coming. Right. So do I have any questions whatsoever about any of this washing up? Oh, 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 oh. I got one more before y'all hit me with a question. 
You should put out some cameras out there too. Family man, not only do I got my blink cameras that I just did I just ordered, I just ordered them. That's who just rang the bell. Perimeter bells. Let's let's talk about breaking perimeter. Let's talk about breaking perimeter. All right. Just being out there, how much land do you have? Do you have plumbing on it? I don't have plumbing or electricity or water. Perimeter bell. I got a perimeter bell that I'm going to let y'all see. Then a, a company just let me, um, I'm going to review these trail cams. I'm not going to show them right now. I'm going to review these trail cams because I want to see how good they work because I know Eco Neighbor was just telling me he got some that's trash. These better be up to par or I ain't showing them. I got four trail cams that I, on top of the ones I already got. So I'm going to put these trail cams out. I'm going to put out these motion detector sensors and my blink cameras. Now let's talk about breaking, breaking uh, somebody intruding on your land. Your first line of defense, legally, legally, put signs everywhere. Be like the old white, the old man with the white suit, Mr. Colonel Kentucky Fried Chicken Man on Jurassic Park. He was like, oh, I spared no expense, no expense, no, 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 no expense was well, spared here. I spent as much as I had to spare, no expense. Spend as much as you need to spend on signage. Because if you have to dispatch somebody or you have to relocate somebody, if you will, they was warned. You can tell your lawyer and tell the court system, man, it's a hundred signs around here that says turn back. This is not your property, private property, no dumping, no trespassing, private property. Everywhere you look, me and Lady Led is about to go out. I put up a few signs. But me and Lady Led, we got a lot of work to do. Are you going to dig a well? Yes. And we're going to spend days putting up all these signs I bought. I bought about $100 worth of no trespassing, keep out, no dumping, all of those signs, private property, violators will be prosecuted, all of those signs I bought because I'm just going to go and put them around my whole perimeter on the inside of my perimeter, you have to do this. You have to do this. Because in a legal, if a legal situation arises where you have to relocate someone for trespassing, the first line of defense is were there signs up that stated this was private property or he, the, the, defend, the defense can't say, um, well, I just had kind of got lost. You was lost. And it's signs to say, go back that way. You're trespassing. Go back that way. You're trespassing. Anything beyond this point, private property. If you don't get those signs, you setting yourself up for a legal problem. Okay. That's your, you can't just come out there. This my own private land. That's TV crap. You will end up in prison with a boyfriend if you go out there shooting people, even on your own land, castle doctorate, all that other crap, do you really want to be in court with that garbage? Trying to defend yourself with just your mouth. Because if you're just trying to defend yourself with your mouth only, here's the problem you have. I'm not, no, I'm not knocking the justice system, but sometimes it's all about who you know. It ain't about whether you was right or wrong. Sometimes you ain't even got enough money to keep yourself out of jail, even though you was right. Huh? So you need as many things that can back you up as you possibly can. Were there signs posted? I got a hundred signs, uh, your honor. Okay. Do you have proof? Yes. Here's the receipts to all of the signs. Here's the pictures of all the signs. Here's the perimeter. Here's all the markings. We spray painting all the trees on the landlines. Spray paint every last freaking tree just to show where my landline is. So you can't walk in here and not see this bright orange stripe around these trees. When you see those bright orange stripes or bright fluorescent green stripes on trees, that's what that means. That's somebody telling you this is a landline 
to something or to somebody. If you pass it, there will be consequences and repercussions. If you want to deal with that, come on into the darkness. Welcome to the jungle, baby. Literally. Welcome to the jungle. We got what it takes. Come on in here. You've been warned. So after that, you got signs saying there's cameras everywhere. You have cameras. Okay. Now your trail cams are picking up evidence of you trespassing. Now you got sensors to show somebody is on your land when they pass a certain point on your land. You hear bing bong or you get an alert on your phone depending on what kind you got. Now you sitting here like you tell the, the courtroom, I got sensors. As you can see, the assailant came this way or the trespasser came this way. There's my signal that signals me to let him know he's intruding on my land. Over here, another 50 yards is a trail cam. Here's all the pictures of him out there. I don't know what this big bag of garbage was, sir. It might have been some parts of someone, but I ain't here. You know, I ain't no detective, but that's evidence if y'all need it. That's that. You will have everything that you legally need. You have to do everything that you can legally do yourself to protect you and your land. The police ain't always coming. They ain't got time for stuff like this. If you live out on the land somewhere in the country, even if you call the police, you live out on the land, they don't know where you live. Ain't no, uh, okay, here's a house, here's a house, here's a house, here's a, there it is. That's uh, 2102. That, no. They got to literally go in the woods to find out where, where your house is, where your property is, and where you are on your property. Even if they find your property by GPS, which I'm finding out now, if you GPS people, if you own property, if you own, say you own 10 acres, <clears throat> uh, GG and Eco, y'all own 20 acres, you can tell the police to come to 123A Street. Your address, the GPS dot might be on acre number one, but y'all live on the back acreage on acreage number 20. The police will arrive at the front of your property, but the crime is happening at the back of your property. That's a, a mile or two miles away. So they got to still sit here and find you. Talk to dispatch. Dispatch is talking to you. You guiding them in like the damn pizza boy. Like, no, make a left. Come on down that road. Yeah, that road belonged to me. Come on down that road all the way to, yeah, to the gate. This, this is a crime happening. Right? This isn't, you're not trying to get the Uber Eats dude to your house. This is supposed to be the police or the worst, the ambulance. So if you're in the middle of nowhere and your GPS marker is way on the clear other side of your land, like mine is, you're going to have a situation. You can't wait for the ambulance. You need to teach yourself first aid. You can't always wait for the police. You need to protect yourself in every kind of way because they're secondary. You're first. You need to defend your own life and your own person first. And then they're your backup. That's how it's supposed to be. You ain't in the city no more. They're your backup. So now you have to say, okay. And some people say, oh, I would never carry, carry no Glockweilers. Never say never. You ain't been in that kind of darkness. You ain't. Can you see your hand at night now? Yes, you can. Even when you wake up to pee, you can see your hand. Something in your house is glowing where you can see your hand. You go outside. One of these lights is on on the street. You can see your hand. I'm somewhere where you, you can't see this. It could be a bat flapping right here. And I would just feel the wind from his wings. I wouldn't even be able to see him. If I did, I'll pass out. But I wouldn't even be able to see him right here doing this. I'd be like this. That's how dark it is. You have to defend yourself. So the first line of defense is use all. There is not enough money that you can spend on trail cams. On uh, uh, um, perimeter bells. 
neon paint to mark your landlines, uh, uh, blink wireless cameras, all kind of wireless cameras. It ain't got to be blink. Go hard with that. And once you have your house built and everything else, go ahead and have a security team put security on your land. Man, it's only you. It's only you. I don't need no night goggles. That's a waste of money. You know why I say somebody else told me to get some night vision goggles. You know why I don't need no night vision goggles? I don't need no night vision goggles because that means I'm out there with whatever I'm looking for. That right there, that right there, you just hurt yourself in a criminal case. I heard a noise. So I went out and looked for it. You instantly told the court you were on the hunt. You grabbed your firearm and you went out to find out what the noise was on your land. <clears throat> you instantly just lost your case or made your case harder because you left your sa your, the safety of your dwelling your locked doors and windows, and you went out into the open to hunt. When you say, I went to look to see what the sound was, you literally, if you grabbed a firearm, going to look just turned into the word hunt. You just turned into a hunter. You went out to discover somebody on your land and you relocated him to Jesus. You are going to gain a best friend cellmate for probably the rest of your life. Do you really want to deal with that? I don't need night vision goggles. I don't need to be, if it get to the point where it done turned into some war zone stuff, that's why I said bring your Bible. It, it done went past, surpass anything I feel like doing to protect myself. You know, if, if, if I got people staring at me, uh, a team of people, uh, uh, war people looking at me through night vision goggles, I probably ain't going to win this anyway. Even if I got some. Okay? So, I don't go out looking. Let me back that up. When you hear, when you see this on television, <gasps> Becky, what was that? I don't know. Let's go see. <laughs> John, be careful before you go out there. Ah, come on. Me, be careful. Give me a break. I'll be right back. You girls keep the couch warm till I get back. That is the first opening scene of every Friday the 13th movie. <laughs> Ain't it? That's the, that's the first opening scene of anyone. Freddy Cougar, Jason, Michael Myers, uh, the dog on... Uh, uh, Booberry Crunch, you name it. You don't count chocula. Any of them movies, that's the first person to get took out. Go see what it was. Calm down, honey. It's okay. Crunch, crunch, crunch. Oh, there it is again. Just hold on. Keep it warm. I'll be back. Nope. He ain't coming back. She see a trail of blood. And then next thing you know, both of them is in the trees, strung up like hogs. And then the Friday the 13th sign come. That's the opening scene. I don't go hunting for crunching noises, man. I'll be like, what was that? I don't know. Lock the door. <laughs> this, I've seen this movie before. <laughs> I've been watching this same movie my whole life. Crunch, crunch, crunch. There it goes again. Let's go upstairs. Right now, everybody upstairs, everybody upstairs. Everybody upstairs, lock yourself in one room. We all go in this one room. I'm going to give you one. I'm going to give you a Glock wallet. You Glock wallet. Anything open that door, do it. I'm not going out to see what's crunching. And, and oh, they cut the power lines. That's messed up. You're not going to go, mm-mm, mm-mm, I'm not. <laughs> oh, they... They cut the phone lines. Mm. You got that thing I gave you, didn't you? 
Okay, check the magazine. It's full? Okay. I don't care about the phone line. You're not going to go see what happened to The Wire? No, I'm not. In a real life situation, as soon as you leave your dwelling, going to investigate, you just put yourself in harm's way legally. No, thank you. If you ain't encroaching on me and some places, you got to damn near do somebody bodily harm before you can uh, relocate them. So I'm not going out there. Hey, what are you doing? Get out of there. You can't be here. This is private property. Mm -mm. Not your dude. Not me. Not me. I'm like, damn, sound like you done mess around and got into the... I think he in the shed. I believe he is. Oh, you hear your Harley start up. Broom. Damn, he got my, got my damn bike. Oh, hope I get that back. Is your insurance up to date? I think so. Mm, I love that bike too. I'm not going out there, man. I'm not going out there. Hey, that's my car. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I'll never do that again. Because all he got to do is pew. He killed you and it was all over a car. You went out there trying to play Rambo. When it comes to your land, you got to protect it. Now, here's another one I'm going to touch on. Then I'm going to leave y'all alone for a minute. Dumping. If you own acreage, I don't care where your acreage is. If you do not have little elves living in trees on your land, you have a dumping problem. If you have little cookie elves it make it, <laughs> living in the trees on your land making cookies, you live in an enchanted forest. So that's not a problem. But 99.9% .9 of us don't live on land and with enchanted trees with little dudes to make cookies in them. We don't live there. So you're going to have an illegal dumping problem. So you're going to constantly, people aren't necessarily encroaching on your property. They're just constantly dumping their trash on one part or many more parts of your land somewhere, depending on where it is. So, that's one of those headaches that you just you just got to deal with. When me and Lady Led lived on that land not far from here, almost every day there was garbage bags and trash because my, my land came up to a, a little road almost every day. And we was in the darkness. Every day I had to go out there. So I, I had a garbage can for our household products. And I had a garbage can for whatever the hell I'm about to find all week on the road, uh, on the land off the road. So dumping is a problem. You, I don't care if you put up fencing, you barbed wire, it don't matter. You're going to get dumped on. So you got to just be ready for that. That's one of the downers of being a landowner. And, you know, you got people that want to come and fish and come and hunt on your land. You're going to have a problem with that. So it's always going to be something. It's always going to be something that you have to. Here's the deal. You're not going to always be able to walk up on somebody. Like, hey, hey, hey. You know somebody live here. This is my land, man. Oh, we didn't know. We've been hunting here for years. I didn't know. I'm sorry. This, I always fished down in this creek. I didn't know. I'm sorry, brother. You're not. Nine times out of ten, you ain't going to get them folks, man. They know what they doing. You ain't going to get nobody that's going to be talking level-headedly about encroaching on your property. You just, listen, even though he's illegally encroaching on your property, that's not how most folks out there look at it. You know how they look at it? You just took food out of my family mouth. I'm just coming down here to get me a couple catfish and going back to the house. I ain't trying to cause no trouble. But you are like, I don't want you to because those are my catfish to feed my family. Now you got a problem. Now you're going to have to defend yourself. And you telling him, please don't come back. It's not going to be, it's not going to go well. Like, listen, I appreciate if y'all don't come back down here. Man, I, I do what a goddamn feel like. You ain't going to tell me, huh? 
They ain't gonna tell me, Jimmy, is they? God dang ain't gonna tell me. Who you talking to, bro? They not listening to you. You know, this is how I tell you. You know why they ain't going to take it lightly? Because they're fishing on this land because they don't have it. They don't have this pond. They don't have this creek on their land. So they come on this land and been coming on this land for years or generations. This, this is their land in their head. They're not going to take you saying they can't eat. And then, you know, you might come on the land and look all fancy. Gigi, Gigi's natural. Gigi's natural. I ain't, I ain't saying no name. Gigi's natural. You might come out there with your hair and nail did and makeup on fleet. I, I ain't saying nothing. Gigi's natural. Gigi's natural. I ain't saying nothing. Gigi. I, you might come out there, you know. And tell them folks they got to get off your land and stuff. And they're going to look at you like, oh, we got us one of these here, ain't we, boy? Oh, ain't you fancy with your little nails and whatnot? Now, what you say we got to do, Jimmy, is you listening? Because I ain't. <laughs> what what she say, Jimmy? She said we got to get off the land, huh? That's what she said? Well, you tell her that I said, all right? She don't know. Tell her Randolph, Billy Johnson, said we, me, and you ain't going no dang gum work. Tell her that with her fancy nails and whatnot. They're not going. They're not going to look at you as an equal if you come down there. Tell them they got to get off your land that you just purchased and you already looking like a million dollars. They ain't trying to listen. No. Nope, they ain't trying to hear that. Ain't trying to hear uh, Gigi's Gigi natural, Gigi's natural. So they're not going to always look at you as an equal. So no matter how nice you say it to them, they're going to have a problem with you. For instance, my perfect example, Homestead Heart had a problem about two years ago with people encroaching and hunting on their land. Look at little Homestead Heart. Look at her. Can you, she about that tall. <laughs> she about that tall, right? Can you see her holding, holding a, a, a big Mossberg and talking about some, you know, y'all better get out of here. Don't make me mad or something, you know, because she, she about that, she about that tall. You gonna run into Randolph and Jimmy. Can you imagine little homestead heart coming out there and Randolph and Jimmy is fishing? They ain't trying to hear no cute little lady telling two grown country boys to get off their land. They ain't trying to hear that. You gonna have to listen. Nice only get you so far. And that's what I got to tell my wife. Nice only get you so far. But when folks don't want to hear nice, you got to serve them like ice. You, they ain't listening to nice. They ain't listening to nice. So you got to serve that ice. You got to be cold. You start out nice and see what, uh, what kind of people we dealing with. But if you run into Randolph and Jimmy, we ain't going no that gum were. If you run into them, oh, 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 oh this is what we doing. Now, you instantly turn into Denzel on, 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 on training day. You're done. You're done talking. Negotiations is over. You, it's time. Look, you Denzel on training day now. Ain't nothing else. Look, I'm, I'm, I'm fighting dirty now. Gigi, I know you're going to have to, I know Gigi ain't even going to start with the niceness. Gigi already know when she whip her hair back, she whip her little, little micros back, she already going to come out the gate because she know they ain't about to take, they ain't going to take her seriously. Like, oh, little pretty little girl, come out. Oh, ain't that cute? You going to come out here and tell somebody to get off your land, ain't you cute little, come out, get off my land. <laughs> you going to have to come out the gate with that heat. Because they already ain't going to think you serious. 
So how do you handle it? You don't come out by yourself. Number one, you should have somebody with you. You can either have your husband or your wife or your friends come with you. You may want to take your yard dogs, bring out a couple of Glockweilers, you know, introduce them to your pets. You may, you got to come out there with to let them know that you ain't just happen to run across them at the mall. This is your land that you have to protect probably for the rest of your life. And you got to get your point across. Y'all can't come back here. Not even for the catfish, son. No. Nah. You got to make it clear. Don't come back here for nothing. I dropped my wallet. I'll mail it to you. Don't come back. Plain and simple. I wouldn't, I wouldn't approach nobody without one of them things close to me. I keep mine on my shoulder anyway. I got, I got Glockwallers on my hip and I got one of them things strapped across my back. And I'm like, hey, how y'all doing? Y'all good? Y'all all right? You lost? No, we are just doing a little fishing. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, no, man. Uh, you know, I just bought the land here about three months ago. So, yeah, man. Uh, we're gonna have to cut that off. We're gonna have to stop that, okay? I mean, just saying. Well, we've been fishing here. You know, my grandpappy fished here. Oh, uh, that's terrible. Yeah, but we can't do that no more, man. You know, I got kids and everything else. We can't do that no more. So you trying to tell me, man, I ain't trying to tell you nothing, sir. I'm just letting you know that's enough. That's enough for that. I ain't got nothing. I ain't got no problem. I don't want no problem. I don't want no smoke. But I'm just telling you, man, that's enough for that. That's, that's the end of that. You got to come out there and be like almost passive aggressive dangerous like. Because I don't want to start nothing. I don't want to start no feuds. But if you if you pull this cord, I'm just telling you, if you pull this cord in my back, man, it's going to be trouble. You don't want to start this engine up, man, because I'm telling you, this is a whole 442 that I'm dealing with up under the hood. You don't want this engine to crank up. So don't pull that cord on me. So I'm just trying to be passive aggressive, like just please, kind of don't. But yeah, I mean it, kind of, you know, and if they don't get it. You let the law know, put some reports in, trespassing reports. You put as many, I don't care if you've seen them just peeing across your fence. Make a report about it because if you end up having to relocate someone for any reason, this is on record. Signs is on the walls, paint is on, I mean, signs is on the trees, paint is on the trees, signs is all everywhere, trail cams everywhere, cameras motion detectors, all of this stuff is everywhere. You talk to the law, you you on the books as reporting trespassing constantly, even if it's peeing across the fence on your land, it don't matter. You're on the books of having a problem with these people for X amount of time. So now if things get wicked and I have to remove you from humanity, it, I've been telling y'all for 10 years the dude been clowning. Nobody done nothing. You ain't doing nothing. Right? You have to make that report. You have to put that stuff on paper and make sure it's on paper. Don't be lazy and say, well, they ain't going to do it again. No, report it each and every single time. Every piece of information you catch off of those cameras, store it down onto a disc and give it to the, you keep a copy, give a copy to the people with the report. You got to record all of this. That's your part of this job. You got to record all this information because if you have to remove somebody um, by force, you need as many ways legally as you could possibly think of to justify your case. Owning land is part of, this is part of it. Be, listen, everybody looking for home ownership. Show of hands, how many people looking for that home ownership? 
How many people looking for land? How many people looking for their home, their first home? They want to buy a home. They want to buy land. They're tired of renting. They're tired of the rat race. They're tired of the city. They're tired of the hustle and bustle. You're tired of all the noise. How many people? Show of hands. Say, me, 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 hand, 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 hand. How many people are you ready for that land? And I'm about to tell you, if you are ready, if you are putting your hand up, you type that number one, t -Cone, Uh, If you are putting your hand up, I'm going to tell you one thing. You don't ever ask the Lord for nothing that you ain't ready to protect. Don't ever ask the Lord for anything that you are not ready to protect. When you go to God and ask him and pray to him for something, you're praying for that wife. You're praying for that husband. You praying for that home. You praying for that land. You praying for that first child. You know you got issues. You praying for that. You praying for that great job. You praying all of those serious, serious things that you get on your knees and ask God for at night. You took time to do that. You didn't ask him, oh Lord, can I get another waffle and some of that more of that buttery syrup? No, you asked him for something serious. Something life altering, something life changing. So if you're going to get on your knees at night and you're going to pray to the, the Lord at, for, for this item or this thing or this person or whatever, if you're praying for that. Before you pray. You need to ask yourself, is it so important that I need to protect? it? If it's not as important to. You need to protect it. It may not be nothing you need to be dropping to your knees and praying for. Because you probably wasting this time. Like you just, that's, that's as equivalent of, oh, one more waffle with some of that hot buttery syrup. No. If it's serious, that means you're willing to protect it. Your child, you're willing to protect it at all costs. Your land, you're willing to protect it at all costs. Your husband, your wife, your mama. Your daddy, you're willing to protect all these things, okay? So if you're praying for land, that go hand in hand with protecting it. So if you can't be out on some land and not have nothing to protect it, a baseball bat ain't going to get it. Baseball bat is good, but it's not as fully realistic as you think. Usually, there's not just one little crackhead creeping through the window. There's going to be a team coming to get you and everything you own. There's always going to be more than one. They Look, let me, let me put it to you like this. Criminals are like freaking Lay's potato chips. Does anybody want to fi finish that? Criminals are like Lay's potato chips. It's always more than one. You just can't have one. <laughs> you just can't have one. It's rarely just one. If you only see one, criminals are like roaches. Criminals are like roaches. If you see one crawling across the table, you got 100,000 of them in the walls. If you see one roach crawling across the table, it's 100,000 of them mugs in the walls. And they running out of space and things is getting crazy. So if you see one criminal coming through your window, there's probably two more or two or more outside watching his back or waiting for the signal for them to come in. If you see one criminal, you can guarantee there's always at least two more somewhere, at least one more. They're like roaches. Lay's potato chips. Just can't have just one. So if you're not willing to protect that land, maybe land is not something you really truly think you want. Because when you go out there and you're in the middle of nowhere, and it's just you. Especially if you've never been in that situation, you're going to run into things you've never run into before. You're going to see and hear things and meet people that you've never dealt with before. When you run into these little townships or these little country off back country woods, they got their own little personal unspoken set of rules and laws. They all know each other. You're the outsider. When you buy that land, you know what they say. Oh, oh, 
You bought old Miss Ruth's land down there, huh? Okay. You just looking at it as land. They see it as you just purchased Miss Ruth's land. Where Miss Ruth 50 years ago told them they can come here and hunt for the rest of their life. They can come and fish on her land for the rest of their life. Miss Ruth, a pillar of the community, told these families this. You move in, you the outsider coming from out of town, you buy this land, and you are breaking Miss, Miss Ruth's lifetime guarantee of fishing with the rest of this community, you're going to have a problem. You need to start figuring out, okay, who with you and who against you? You need to figure that out quick. Because y'all can't keep coming here hunting. You can't keep coming here fishing. That deer on my land, that's my deer. If you put that deer down, I just told you don't put no, don't come in here shooting no deer. Leave that deer where it lay. I'm going to strip him down tonight. That's my deer. I, what? Oh, you spent the bullet? What kind of gun you got? Huh? 30-30? Here. Buy you a whole nother box of ammo. But that's my deer. You ain't eating him tonight. I am. You're going to have to come a little ruthless with it. Straight out the gate. True story. You can't come soft like, well, my husband, um, he ain't here right now. Oh, my God. Never tell nobody you by yourself. Never tell nobody you by yourself on your land. Well, my husband ain't here right now, but oh, no, never do that. Ever. Ever. Never tell uh, men, never be like, uh, well, my wife just ran to the store. No, nope. because you vulnerable too. You know, it's it's a whole nother world now, if you know what I mean. So just because you a whole dude don't mean they won't, <laughs> they won't get you too. Never tell nobody you, you there by yourself. <laughs> it's a new world now. It's 2023. I don't know. Ladies, never tell nobody your husband to be back in a minute. No. Never come out your house without that thing across your back like you a freaking Jedi. Every time you come out your house, listen, it's not comfortable to carry a knife. It's not comfortable to have a couple Glock wallets on your hip. It's not comfortable to have a 12 gauge on your back. It's not comfortable to have a 1022 on your back. It's not comfortable. It's cumbersome. It's awkward. But you are putting yourself in harm's way if you come outside your house and stumble across something. Everybody that's been watching me for years, I know it's a lot of new subscribers, but a lot of people have been watching me for, for years. And there's a reason my name is Lead Farmer. I don't go nowhere, not even to take out the trash in my house coat, son. I got one of them things in every one of the house coats y'all see me in. I don't go out this house. I don't talk to the mailman, nothing. Uh, can you sign here? I'll be like, hold on a minute. <laughs> oh, almost caught me slipping. I don't, leave, I don't go to the door, man, and do nothing without one of them things on me. So out in the country, I sure the hell ain't going to go. I'm not leaving outside this dwelling without one of them. Boy, I'm going to make some have to go bark. Full of kibble. Ladies, don't be afraid to have one of them things draped across your back while you talking to somebody on your land. I ain't saying go to the, go to the local Walmart like that. You're going to catch a case. I'm talking about on your land, on your land, have one of them things strapped across your back so they know you ain't playing. Oh, hi, I'm Miss Jean. I just come to say hello. You're the new landowners. I just wanted to, oh, okay. Well, hold on a minute. Hey, hi, it's nice to meet you. You holding that barrel. It's nice to meet you. Thank you. Okay. It's, oh, it's, oh, a pie. Oh, you brought me a pie. I love pie. Thank you. Um, yeah. Um, uh, uh, is your husband in? Yeah, he in there. He in the shower though. Your husband gone to work. He ain't gonna be back for twelve hours. He's in the shower. But when he comes out, we're gonna come down and meet you. Oh, uh, uh, excuse me. I'm sorry. You 
constantly adjusting that, that doggone boomstick on your back. Letting people know, man. Something about those two. <laughs> Something about them. Yeah, don't go playing with them. Want to know what I ordered today? True story. I ordered a cowbell. I ordered a cowbell because I got them perimeter, um, them perimeter uh, bells that go off if you cross them. But the first thing I bought was a cowbell. Because if you... You cannot get to my land without me letting you in. So I can prob probably hear that cowbell ringing at the gate. You know what I'm saying? And I could probably see you through some binoculars. But don't come down here. Don't come down this road. Don't come down here. Thank you, SD. Say, why not use your hands when you... Uh, why not use your hands? You win some, you lose. Oh, you win some, you lose some, but you live another day. There you go. There you go. Why not use your hands? Why not use your hands? You win some, you lose some. Yeah, no, that's ridiculous. I ain't gonna lie to you. Thank you for the for the super chat. But why not use your hands? You want to know why you don't use your hands in that situation? Because Nine times out of 10, if somebody is encroaching on your land, they're not going to use their hands. That's some TV bullshit. This is 2023. Let me hit you with another one. Thank you, uh, Donna Divine Purpose. and love this guy. Thanks, bro, Led and Lady Led. Blessing to you both. Thank you so much. Let me be honest with you. Now, let's be realistic. We're, I'm being realistic with this talk. Everything about it is realistic. Let me hit you with this scenario. And I want you to answer this in your own head. You don't got to put it in the comments. But everybody answer this with your own head, especially the person that just said, use your hands. When is the last news reporting of somebody getting beat up to death? A drive-by beating. When, when? When is the last report? Anywhere in America. Give it to me. When is the last time somebody had their hands and just did a drive-by beating or just went and beat somebody literally to death? Or, hey, here you go, beat a whole movie theater up with their hands to death. You know why you don't hear that on the news any freaking where? Because it's impossible. The people that's out to get you ain't coming with these. This is not 1952. They ain't doing this. Put them up, put them up. Nobody doing that. If you have the mindset to go and buy some land and this is the only weapon you got, I'll pray for you. You, you clearly have never been outside on no land. You have never been anywhere, actually, if this is all you got in 2023. See, let me put it to you like this. My Glockwallers is my first line of defense. And then my buck knife is my backup. My Glockwallers is my first line of defense and my buck knife is my backup. After that backup, this is my backup. It ain't the other way around no more. This ain't 1950. Ain't nobody fighting. When is the last? They don't even fight in schools anymore. When is the last kid done came home with a black eye? Kids don't come home with black eyes no more. And, and an and a atomic wedgie. Kids come home in caskets from school. So for anybody coming to talk about some, why don't we, you know, you don't, you don't believe in 2A and you coming with them hands. Let me tell you something. Kids don't come home with black eyes no more. They come home in caskets. Kids don't come home with a kick me sign taped to their damn book bag no more. They come home in caskets. I don't want to hear that. Now, I know we all deal with our own personal set of realities, 
My reality is universal, though. My my reality is not a a uh, um a little circle, lack of better words. Um, reality. My reality ain't a neighborhood. Oh, oh, so just just joking. Yeah, don't joke with me about that though, okay? I'm gonna be honest with you. That that wasn't funny at all. <laughs> be honest with you. I, I don't I don't play with when it comes to protection, that's one of the things that ain't funny to me. True story. Because you don't know how many other people in here that you just riled up. And that that's that's wasn't funny, bro. Okay. Just saying, we we don't play about protection. Now I'm in here spitting some real game, true, tried and true, because there's people out here trying to get out of this rat race, and they going out into this country, and they going off into these countryside. Thank you, African dreaming. Say, unk, you own one. Folks ain't using hands no more outside of MMA. Amen. If you gon if you gonna use hands, you gon what? You gonna bring home a million dollar purse, right? No. Not in these schools, man. True story, all jokes aside, if you plan on purchasing land, if you plan on purchasing anything, you better be prepared to protect it. Is, is a shotgun a good house defense? I can't legally tell you that. If you don't know anything about a shotgun, you might do, want to Google that and do some research, okay? That's all about preference. Thank you, Queen Wisdom. So I'm, I'm sorry I went on so long, but I got so, I, in such a short amount of time, I have so much information that's either going to help somebody move forward on this journey or have somebody just stop and like, hmm, do I really want this smoke? Do I really want this? Because I'm going to tell you another thing, too. I'm going to go on here and stretch it. Might as well. Taking a dump. You don't think about peeing and pooping when you live in a house. You don't think about it. Now you got water. You got energy. You got fuel. You got to worry about. Now you got to worry about something as simple as taking a dump. Remember the, Remember we ate first, washed the dishes, then washed up in the dishwater? Okay. Now you got to take a dump. Where is you doing that at on your land? That gets real tricky after a while. Number one, five gallon buckets, they fill up. They fill up. Fast, actually. If you're using that bucket all day, every day, it, it fills up really fast for one person. Two people. You're going to have to dump him after about day number two. Um, And here's another one, too. You know, I was talking about using the kitty litter. That get old real fast, too. Kitty litter costs a, costs a fortune. You better start going out there and get some grass, some peat moss, some dirt, some soil, and throw in that bucket. Kitty litter is expensive. I said, I said once I ran out of that first kitty litter, that's enough for that. I ain't going to keep buying that. I'm going to go out here with this hard rake, rake up some of this dry grass and put that on there and right, turn it into compost. I went out there, got some pine needles. I got some old grass. I put that in the bucket. I said, I ain't going to keep on buying kitty litter. So just getting rid of your human waste becomes ridiculous. You ain't where you getting sawdust from though. <laughs> You sawdust. Where are you getting sawdust? You can't say, I'm going I'm to I'm go to Home Depot and get sawdust. You got to drive 10, 20, 30 miles to get to the nearest Home Depot and Lowe's. If you're going to buy some from Tractor Supply, you got to drive another 10, 20, 30, 40 miles to get to the nearest Tractor Supply. It's not that simple no more about what you about to buy to put in your, your pot. You better start using the resources on your land. Taking a shower or wash. I ain't going to say taking a shower. Washing up. You know what I set up? I took my two-man tent and I put out there my shower tent. I set that up outside the RV. Because after a while, this gets kind of stupid. Right? This gets kind of lit. This gets dumb after a while. 
You ain't taking no shower in the RV because you know that's resources that you wasted. You that's also you gotta clean that mess up. Set that shower tin up outside so you can stretch out, wash up good, heat that water up good in that bucket. Set you one of them little heaters in there, man. Go to town. I'm going to show y'all when I get back to the land, I'm going to show y'all how I got it set up now. Every day I'm doing something different and I'm like, I don't need that. I need to go home and get that. I don't need this. I need to do this a little bit better. And then in our RV, it's not enough space for the actual toilet, the, the sink, the shower, which I got a washing machine in, which I probably never use. And then the bucket in the middle, the way ours is set up. I take the whole bucket out and sit it in the middle of the living room. I told y'all, next to the stove, next to the couch, the steering wheel. I'm driving, cooking, baking. I'm doing everything. I'm looking out the window. I'm doing everything. And I'm sitting on a bucket half naked, doing my business in the middle of the living room, the dining room, the kitchen, and the driving area. Stuff gets weird. If you ever run up on somebody that's living on, the, on off the grid on some land like that and you see them doing something like that, you happen to run up on them like this, don't be disturbed. They, they just real. Like, I'm not going to keep on trying to, what am I trying to be private for? Man, bring that bucket up out of that room, man. Bring that bucket up out of that room. You go somewhere where you can, you can stretch out, <laughs> you know? This ain't, you ain't in no house. Go somewhere where you can stretch out. Then, to wash up, you may want to buy you a shower tank. <laughs> Say first an outhouse, then a septic tank. There you go. If, the closest thing to an outhouse is get you one of them shower tents. I've had one for years. I got several of them. Man, set them up. You got company coming? You got company coming? Want to come see the land? My sister still ain't the twins. They ain't been out there yet. They like, when is you going to get a toilet? Yeah, it ain't, it ain't going down like that. <laughs> I got I got a, I got this bucket, son. Oh, we'll come out there when you get a toilet. Don't come out here then. Because I ain't going to lie to you. I'd rather enjoy you. I ain't saying I get off on bucket dumps. But I'm telling you when I say I'd rather enjoy it. Because I know I didn't waste anything. I came home today and I'm telling you, my belly was all twisted up like a pretzel. My belly was, oh my God. I came in the house like, oh Jesus. Oh Lord. Oh, I see her after six days. She said, hey honey, yeah, I love you. I, give me a second. Give me a second. Give me a second. I'll kiss you in a minute. You know, as bad as I had to use the bathroom. Number one and two, number two. I had to do a 12. <laughs> I had to do a number one and a number two. So I had to do a whole 12, right? So I'm about to drop a 12. And right when I pull my pants down, I look behind me and I see in the bowl three gallons of water inside the bowl. And the thought went across my head, I'm going to flush whatever I do down with another three to four gallons of water. Then it's going to fill back up and a whole nother 10 gallons of water. I just wasted about 20 gallons of water on a turd. Can you believe all that ran through my head before I sat down on that, on that toilet bowl? I've been dropping everything in this Home Depot bucket for six days and ain't wasted one drop of water. And now the thought is coming up on me. That I'm about to waste all this water that I wish I had to drink about three days ago. I wish I had that much water. That's why I was like, I don't have enough water. I wish I had 20 gallons of water three days ago that I'm about to flush down a 12 with, right? Yeah, not a, not a one, not, not a number one, not a number two. When you got to do both, it's a, it's a 12. <laughs> I had to do a 12 and you know that ain't going to go down lightly. And I ain't been eating right since I've been out there because, you know, 
you've been you kind of be eating weird. And I don't believe I ate nothing green in about three days. So it's time to, you know, it was one of them. It was one of them backyard barbecue dumps. So I know my guts was tore up. No more waste. Poop in the yard. What you gonna do with it after it's in the yard? You gotta, you gotta use your head. You got when you get out there, you start thinking real logically. You know what I do do? Do do. You you know what I do though? I I, I pee around if I'm outside, I pee around the whole RV. If I don't do that, I pee in a Pepsi can and then and then pour it out around my RV. Don't ask me how that happens. It, I don't I don't be having nothing to do. I know everybody's like peeing in a Pepsi can. Listen to me. Did not tell you you get so bored. I need Jesus. I, this is when the Bible come in. I was like, Lord, I need to bring my Bible out here. I'm peeing in a Pepsi can for fun. You know, you it's like your own amusement park. It's like you playing your own little state fair game. You can't drip. You can't drop a drip. Don't drop a drip. If you drop a drip, who fills up the balloon the fastest? Fill up the balloon or you'll get the winner. You win the little stuffed animal. So I use whatever I can so I can spread my scent around my perimeter where I'm staying at so animals smell me and think twice. It worked here at my house, so I figure it, it might work out in the wilderness too. So I'm spreading my scent, and, and then I make sure I cut that Pepsi can in half and throw him away. I don't just throw him away. I cut him in half because I'm becoming so resourceful that I may use that can for something else. I might end up drinking out of it or something. So I know... You better make sure you can't drink out of this. Cut, Just cut it in half. Or I get so bored, I just crank it in half like this until it break open. Then just make sure you can't do that. Okay? So, I'm going to leave y'all alone because we about to do the B class. And Lady Lay about to come in here and, and we going to do some instructions and stuff. I just want to let you guys know I appreciate you. I want to say thank you to all my old subscribers. Thank you to my new subscribers. Thank you for everybody to hang out with me. Thank you for even using even a little bit of the knowledge that we bring y'all. Thank you so much. I know I like to goof around a little bit, but for the most part, I be meaning what I say. I'm trying to help folks out the best I possibly can. And I got a lot of friends here on YouTube that you can go over to and check them out. And they'll help you just as much as I'm trying to help you too. All right. I don't hang out. I don't hang out with folks that ain't trying to help other folks. I just don't. Anybody that I always mention, anybody y'all see me on their channels and the people that I'm in the bushes checking out, them is the people that I know are good solid folks is helping the community, helping the whole world, actually, because the whole world is watching you. So I want to say thank you for coming in. Thank you for subscribing to me and all of our friends here on YouTube, on the Greenhouse Lounge and all the other factions of YouTube. Thank you because we love and need your support. So thank you for that. Lev Farmer 73, I love your, oh, I, I left one piece out. I was out and about the other day, and I want to say hello to everybody I saw, uh, the, the three young ladies at the gas station, um, three young ladies at the gas station, I want to say hello to you, to all of y'all, it was two ladies in the car, and they called somebody on the phone, it was like, it's Leia Farmer right here, <laughs> Leia Farmer right here, girl, you lying, no, he right here in front of us. Look at him. I want to say hello to y'all. I want to say hello to my brother. Yes, I did get the grapefruit tree. So I want to say hello to you and your lovely wife. Thank you guys for just, man, supporting me all everywhere I go. Thank you to the young man at, at that tractor supply. He was like, man, I, I know your face. I, I You you want them Simmons? I said, no. Oh, you want them Johnsons? No. You related to the, uh, the O'Neills? No. Man, I know your face. I said, you probably do. I want to say hello to the, that young man if he ends up running across this video. 
Thank you so much, everybody, for all the support and all the love. I hope I reflect that right back to you, okay? Live Farmer 73, I love y'all, and I'm out. I see you soon, okay? And I'm still about to bring that freaking heat with all that solar and all of this stuff. Nothing is going to stop. Nothing is going to change. We're going to keep it rocking. All right, Live Farmer 73, I love you, and I'm out.